We're on scene of an active police standoff. It's been going on for hours now. There's a large police presence. We've talked to neighbors what they have to say coming up. He was, a, he was a hard worker. Friends and family say they'll be missed. Tonight, we're learning more about the UK employee and Louisville police officer killed in a crash in downtown Lexington. And Kentucky finally gets to hit the hardwood and play somebody besides themselves. A preview of tonight's matchup with Clarion at Rupp Arena coming up. This is WKYT News at 6. A tense situation going on right now in Richmond. You're watching WKYT. I'm Sean Moody. Several police officers have surrounded a home on Valley Street in Richmond, but police have not yet told us what led them to that home. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is live at the scene with our top story, talking with neighbors who can't get home because of this standoff. Caitlin? Sean, neighbors are behind me here. They've been sitting in their cars for a while now. They are sitting there waiting to hear news of when they can get back to their cars. Now, those neighbors heard gunshots earlier today, and we heard some again about an hour ago. If we look this way, there's a large police presence. You can see an ambulance there, multiple, multiple police cars. Police have been just out here a moment ago. It looks like they got gas max out of their trunk. Um, and I think it may be out of view side, but it's further down on the left. We've seen police surround a home. It's been quiet here as of late, but neighbors say that wasn't the case earlier today. They've been camped out down the street for some time. They tell us there was commotion when the son of the person living in the home came speeding down the street, went through police tape, then was tackled by officers. Police have been here the majority of the day. We've watched as more officers have arrived in tactical gear. They knocked on my door and they said, we need to evacuate you. Um, so I was like, all right, well, let me grab a few things and I'll be out the door. And they escorted me around. Uh, there was two or three of them that surrounded me and kind of escorted me out and around the house and escorted me back past the ambulance and, and took me from there. So. And did you actually hear the shots? I heard one gunshot. Um, that's right when they kicked in the door. Kentucky Utilities got here around 430 and met police. Now, we still have actually not been able to talk to police for an update. So right now, we still don't know what led up to the standoff, and there's no indication of how much longer they will be here. I was able to talk to the son, and he said police have let him talk to his mom, who is apparently inside the home. In Richmond, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. The University of Kentucky is mourning the loss of one of its own tonight. Lexington police say a UK employee and a Louisville police officer were both killed Saturday morning when they were hit by an SUV. Police tell us the officer, Detective Jason Schweitzer, and Timothy Moore were standing along South Upper Street when they were hit. WKYT Sabira Rayford talked with UK leaders about how Moore will be remembered. UK spokesperson Jay Blanton says Timothy Moore was a utility plant operator. He says Moore was on the clock when the crash happened. Police say Moore was on the corner of South Upper giving directions to Louisville detective Jason Schweitzer when a drunk driver lost control of her car and hit them. The crash happened around 2.30 in the morning and 56-year-old Moore and 37-year-old Schweitzer were taken to the hospital where they later passed away. The driver of the car, 26-year-old Suzanne Whitlow, was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Police have charged her with two counts of manslaughter and DUI. Blanton says Moore was an employee at UK for 14 years. What I've, what I've been told is that he was a, was a hard worker, one of those folks that uh, keeps the place going day in and day out, working the, working the third shifts. So he might not see those folks a lot because they're working at a time when most of us are asleep, but uh, these are the people that make the institution go and make sure it operates smoothly and are there when the weather's good or the weather's bad and um, make, sure that, make sure that this place can function. Schweitzer was in Lexington for a fraternal order of police conference. He was vice president of the River City Lodge. Visitation will be Tuesday at Rattleman Funeral Home in Louisville. His funeral will be held on Wednesday. Blanton says UK will be providing grief counselors for those who work with more. In Lexington, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. We've checked with the Fayette County Jail again today, and so far the person who police say was driving and is charged in the case has not been booked. State police have arrested a Russell County man on murder charges tonight. Troopers say 70-year-old Douglas Carnes was found dead in his home along South Main Street in Jamestown Saturday morning. 
They say Karnas was involved in a fight. They believe he was beaten and cut to death. Now, the man that you see on your screen, 53-year-old Rick McWhorter, is charged with murder. We are wrapping up the weekend with more warm weather. The summer-like weather is still hanging around. We won't need our coats for Halloween this year. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has a look at the forecast. And it's nice, Sean. It's been nice out there all day long. A lot of folks getting back into the upper 70s, low 80s again. And we are just seeing some cloud cover drift into the skies here right now in Lexington. So you see that off in the distance. Now, it's been trying to get in here for a little while now, so it continues to thicken up. And it will do so uh, as we progress through the rest of the evening here. Check this out, though. I'll, I'll change the view. We'll move back a little bit more toward the uh, south here. And there's the sun. So if you were looking for it, it's still out there, but that blanket of clouds is on the move. Let me show you what we've got. 77 right now with uh, winds coming in out of the west at around 7 miles per hour. Very comfortable, to say the least, especially when we should be in the 60s. A few showers have developed. Uh, it looks like we're tracking some in parts of Harrison County, more so in Ohio. So a few of us could run into a renegade shower or two throughout the rest of the evening. Area-wide, you can see temperatures are generally in the 70s, but that cooler air already showing up in Covington, and that's going to try to move a little more toward the south as we progress through the rest of the overnight. I will track that air mass into town coming up in just a few minutes. Right, Jim, thank you. It does not feel like it's time for basketball season yet, but Kentucky will hit the hardwood tonight and finally get to play somebody besides themselves. Cats will take on Clarion in less than an hour now at Rupp Arena. And as WKYT's Rob Bromley tells us, this game has a special meaning for Coach Cal. From the floor of Rupp Arena, we look forward to the first exhibition game here tonight. First time the Cats have gone against an opponent this season, and it is John Calipari's alma mater, Clarion. We will get an idea here tonight of what Cal is thinking as far as lineups are concerned. After the blue-white game, he said he started to work with the three guards. But the Cats just want to come out, get comfortable on their home court, and execute. We just want to be competitive, you know, um, kind of see where we are against somebody else who isn't us. And, uh, you know, we just want to use that as an opportunity to get our plays right, you know, um, just really focus and, and just get used to playing it right. I remember playing Christian Brothers at Memphis and us thinking we're going to go in and work on our stuff and we're down like 10 at half and win by five. I mean, this stuff, you know, these teams come in here and they're playing in front of a big crowd and they get excited and they're going to come after us. So it is Clarion, John Calipari's alma mater, his coach at Clarion, Joe DiGregorio, will be here tonight along with his high school coach. I'll have much more coming up shortly in sports. For now, that's it from here on the floor of Rupp. Back to you. Rob, thank you. Now, besides basketball, this time of year is also all about the scares. And the Lexington family is terrifying people for a good reason. Nightmare on Greenway is open tonight for anybody who's up for a scare. WKYT's Lauren Miner went through the haunted house this afternoon. This Halloween, Stephen Cobert so. is not holding back. Once you come into here, you're going to be greeted by another actor. And we have pressure plates throughout the entire house. From the kitchen to the garage, he has transformed his house into a haunted house. The whole house from floor to the ceilings are covered in this plastic sheeting to protect my home and also to make sure that we're, you know, being safe and everyone is, is staying where they need to be. It took months of preparation and over 500 hours to create and design this haunted house, along with coming up with the best ways to scare people. I'll see you in a Every piece of square footage is an entire haunted house. So when the first moment you walk in, you're greeted by our actors. One of those actors is Stephen's daughter, Madison, who plays a witch. She says she's friendly, but you may still want to watch your back. I just try to sneak out and just go scare people. Scaring people is what haunted houses were made for, but this haunted house holds more meaning. Stephen created the house to help raise money for those struggling with PTSD. I was struck with tragic loss in my life um, from various people who had committed suicide because of uh, post-traumatic stress. Stephen says the donations raised from the haunted house will be given to wounded warriors. To me, it hits home every single time. Uh, as a veteran myself, I understand those struggles, and it's very important that people, especially in Lexington, understand that this is an issue here, and it's something that we can tackle. Um, it just takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of time, but it's worth it in the long run. Reporting in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. 
The haunted house itself is free, but donations are welcome. The money will go toward the Warrior Life Center. Family also set up an online fundraiser, and you can find a link to that page on our website, WKYT.com. Coming up, we'll tell you about a car show in Lexington where all of the proceeds are benefiting the family of a four-year-old boy with brain cancer. Your hour-by-hour hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Certainly a nice day out there. Temperatures running well into the upper 70s, low 80s again for us. Let's get right to it so you can see what we've got going on. Uh, it's 77 now in Lexington, so we've backed off some. Now compare that to just up the road into Covington where we find 66 degrees. Now what's happening is that front and the showers are now dropping in on the area, so it's a little bit of a change in the atmosphere, so cooling us off. The rest of us are fine, and 66 isn't that bad because if it was happening right now here in Lexington, it would still be above normal for this time of year. So it's just all about perspective at this point. But it will feel cooler when that does settle in. And it will a little bit later on tonight. Here's some of the rogue showers that are out ahead of this. You can see some just north of Cynthiana, some toward Mount Olivet there. Generally light in nature and a little heavier, though, right around Maysville at this moment. What it is, as I mentioned, that frontal boundary. It's driving in, even igniting a little bit of lightning uh, off across parts of uh, West Virginia. So some actual thunder showers are going up in that area now. We have the front dropping in. You can see immediately behind it, temperatures are changing. Where we've got the oranges here, a lot of warmth. But north of it, temperatures are falling rapidly. And as we head through the rest of the evening here and into the overnight, you can see that we are quite a bit cooler compared to tomorrow with uh, temperatures into the low 70s for highs. I think that's where we'll likely end up. Hour by hour, let me track the front through here later on tonight, push us through, then we're kind of stuck with it uh, at least for a little while before it starts making the transition back to the north. Now, when it starts making that transition back to the north, that's when we start running into temperatures jumping up a little bit uh, again because uh, as it blasts right on past, we'll see our temperatures get back into the uh, upper 70s and low 80s again going into Tuesday. So, again, that's some warm stuff coming at you. Here goes a seven-day forecast that has that in it, 80 on Tuesday, 81 on Wednesday. I think the farther north and east you go tomorrow, the cooler you will be. So while I think we're around 73-ish in Lexington, you might run into a 68 or maybe even as not that much farther north, but just that, that much farther east, it's Moorhead. Maybe they're in this upper 60. So it could be a little split to state for us tomorrow. And we're talking the first few days of November in that forecast. <laughs> yes, we That's are. That's unbelievable. Very warm. That weather, we will take it though. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. A Lexington business wants to make sure a little boy dealing with cancer has something to smile about these days. Detail Lex hosted a car show today to help send four-year-old Azrael Ruga on the trip of a lifetime. WKYT's Mike Linden has the story. Azarel Puga is a four-year-old boy with a big family. Azarel is the youngest of seven. Uh, he is the most loving kid ever. You know, he meets you and he just, he likes everybody. This past July, Azarel's family was turned upside down. He does have a, what's called a glioblastoma which is a stage four um, brain, brain tumor. When Azarel's older brother told his bosses at Detail Lex about Azarel's condition, they rallied together to put on a car show with all proceeds going to Azarel. We're a family. And the community is our heart. So to see a kid suffering like that, and we get to give back just a little bit, that's everything. While all of the proceeds to the car show will go to the Puga family, people that attend the car show are being asked to vote for their favorite, with the winner taking home a grand prize trophy and a gift certificate to Detail Lex. Lyon says he hopes to raise enough money to send the Puga family on a special vacation. We want to send him to Disney World, someplace like that. Let him go have some fun. If we could get him to go to Disney World, I'll be the happiest guy in Lexington. Even after the car show ends, Azarel's battle continues, and his family will be there every step of the way. When something like this happens, you don't know how long you have or, you know, what's going to happen. So it's just important to love everybody and, you know, treat each other with respect and kindness. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. If you'd like to help send Azarel to Disney World, you can drop off donations for the Puga family at Detail Lex on East 2nd Street. 
Lee Kay's in next with sports, and the Kentucky basketball season starts tonight. It does, Sean. The Wildcats will be on the Rupp Arena floor against someone other than themselves. We will check back in with Rob Bromley. And the football cats are on a roll following a win at Missouri. Part of the reason is the Wildcat formation. We'll talk about it next in sports. John Calipari has assembled another talented team at Kentucky, and tonight the Cats tip off the exhibition season. So who will start the game? That's something even Cal didn't know four days ago. With more from Rupp Arena, here's Rob Bromley. Well, Lee Kay here in Rupp tonight, we look forward to seeing a lot of things. The three-guard lineup, Ty Winyard finally playing in a game for the first time, and it will be the first that we've seen Isaac Humphreys in action this season. Looking back on the Blue Way game, Malik Monk turned in the play of the game, bringing the house down with this dunk. Monk could turn out to be the Cats' leading scorer this season. He's getting better. He's still got a ways to go. I, I want him to be more aggressive. He's not as aggressive as he needs to be, and I told him, I, I can always tell you when not to do something, but you've got to go be more aggressive, get in that lane, play faster. Doesn't mean you have to be out of control. But we're, we're also going to try some different combinations. I mean, I, I, I don't know. They were asking me, well, who's going to start? I said, it really doesn't matter, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Exhibition action here with Clarion tonight. The game will tip off at 7 o'clock on the SEC Network. That's it from here on the floor of Rupp. Lee K. back to you. So Kentucky and John Calipari's alma mater Clarion tip off in about a half an hour. Seat on the SEC Network highlights at 11 right here on WKYT. Well, after a rocky start to the season, the UK football team has won five of its last six and are now just one win away from a bold bid. Long gone are the days of the air raid siren as the Wildcats used the ground and pound approach Saturday at Missouri and a heavy dose of the Wildcat formation with Boom Williams and Benny Snell taking the direct snap. It's a wrinkle in the offense that the team has had success with. You know, that controlling the clock was a big part of it. And it, during the bye week, we had some uh, time, and we added to it a little bit. And, I, and I, got, I gave them a few wrinkles that have given me problems over the years, and we put those in the last two weeks, and, and they've helped a bit. And uh, they helped us uh, last week after the bye, some, some, some new little wrinkles that, again, have created, uh, they were simple for us to do, but they've created issues for me in the past. The Wildcats return home Saturday to host Georgia. The Bulldogs are 2-4 and four in league play, coming off a loss to Florida. Kickoff set for 7.30 on the SEC Network. The NFL returning to London this week, a first-ever trip across the pond for the Bengals. It was actually a home game for Cincinnati at Wembley Stadium, taking on the Redskins. Third quarter, Bengals leading 13-10. Andy Dalton fakes the handoff and takes it in himself for the one-yard touchdown. 20-10 Bengals. Go to the fourth quarter, though, now 24-20 Redskins. Jeremy Hill runs it off the left side for the one yard score. A late field goal would send this game into overtime. And in OT, Redskins kicker Dustin Hopkins with a chance to win it, but Hopkins misses the field goal. After a Bengals turnover, Washington with one last play of the game. Kirk Cousins going to buy some time and throw the Hail Mary, but it's going to fall incomplete. This game would end in a 27 to 27 tie. Despite being in London, penalty kicks were not an option. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously the, the weird feeling of we didn't lose, but we didn't win. It feels more like a loss than anything. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll come back from the bye and we got to we got to get things going for the last last eight of the season. He don't get to win, but we don't get a loss either. And so we know at the end of the year, those, that pays dividends. We just handle our business. We still handle our business. We're fine. The Indians took a three games to one lead in the World Series on Saturday, thanks in part to a big night from former Kentucky Wildcat Jason Kipnis. He went three of five, three for five, and scored a pair of runs and delivered a three run home run in the seventh inning to break the game wide open. Kipnis became the first opposing player to hit a three run home run in the World Series at Wrigley Field since Babe Ruth. I have a lot of joy in playing this game um, and to be put into a situation like this and actually have something happen like that is, for lack of a better term, is a dream come true, like they say. And uh, to have my family in the stands, friends in the stands, but to be able, more importantly, to help this offense, I think that was one of the bigger enjoyments for me. Game six is tonight. The Indians will have a chance to win it for the first time since 1948. Be right back.
Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $40 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot, $198 million. And the weather is just kind of like a million bucks. Right? Oh, it's sure, maybe a billion. I mean, yeah. we're, we're winning out there right now. Highs tomorrow down a little bit compared to today, which, I mean, that's not really saying a lot. 73 <laughs> for a high. Some of us, I think, maybe toward the north and east uh, might fall in the upper 60s tomorrow because of the positioning of that front. But uh, overall, very good looking Halloween. And then we're right back into the low 80s Tuesday into Wednesday before another front comes along, takes a real bite out of temperatures and tries to bring true fall back to the area. Does this mean we're going to have a really cold winter? We're you know, it, for this? here's the thing. It has no bearing on the long range okay. impact. So well, there you go. Well, we'll, we're going to hold you to that. Yeah. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Our next newscast is at 11. We'll see you then.